You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Hello, good afternoon. We are here at Lone Star Radio on Conroe Culture News. I'm your host, Margie Taylor. And you're going to walk away with knowing more information after this hourly show than you knew before you listened. So, of course, it's August 7th, and I am here with a couple of my rowdy friends. And uh, they're going to talk to us about the Monty Awards that are happening in downtown Conroe uh, at the, at the uh, Crichton Theater this Saturday. I am also here with Sandy Wood from HCL, HCA Hospital. She's going to share information about what to look for when you're having a stroke. And we hope that never happens, but that way you'll recognize some of the symptoms and be able to help someone uh, that is having a stroke. And then we're going to be joined by da- Dawson Schnotz of the Conroe High School Football Boosters. They are having a Meet the Tigers a uh, big party, and that's going to happen Friday. And also Friday evening is going to be the uh, Branding Iron Custom Goods first anniversary party. So we have a lot going on in downtown Conroe, but that shouldn't surprise you because it is the fastest growing city in the country. So there's always something, always something happening. So, uh, back to what's happening around us is the Astros are still in the lead. They have 70 wins to 40 losses, and uh, we're hoping that they hold on to their where they are in the league through October 1st, and uh, then we'll see what happens with the World Series. But that would be another cool thing to happen. Okay, this Wednesday, the Texans have their preseason game against the Panthers, in North Carolina. We have four preseason games, and then the regular season begins with the opener September 10th against the Jaguars. So back to our local news and happenings. Tonight, it's Monday Madness with Caleb of the Homegrown Tomatoes at the Corner Pub. And he is getting ready to cut his first CD that's awesome. Caleb is really good. They played at the Conroe Americana Music Festival, and I'm sure they will be available for next year when we have that in May 2018. So Fred McIntosh with Charles Peters will again be at the Red Brick Tavern on stage at 730. So you can listen to blues, alternative rock, country rock, all within feet of each other right across the street. And they're both free. So get rid of the Monday madness. Go have some fun. Tomorrow, the Conroe Exchange Club will host an informational meeting at McKenzie's Barbecue at 12 noon. They're a new civic service orientation looking for charter members to start this new group. It's been around for over 100 years. They were on the show a couple of weeks ago. And uh, their whole big mission is doing good, having fun, and building relationships. So if this sounds like something you want to get involved in, that's the Conroe Exchange Club at noon tomorrow at McKenzie's Barbecue. Is the food free? I don't know. But go there and find out. It's good food anyway. Good barbecue. Of course, that's still in Conroe, too. Just saying. So Wednesday, we have Harley Meyer will host the open mic at the Corner Pub beginning at 9. And you can start your Thursday off with the morning mingle with the Conroe Chamber. And that starts at 7.30 a.m. at Incredible Pizza. They always have fabulous fabulous, uh, breakfasts. (laughs) Fabulous breakfasts. Breakfast, I guess is how you really say it. But you can meet new people. Uh, It's all about the relationships. Everything is. So don't ask them what their business is, but ask them about how they spent their weekend and what they like to do, because those are the stories that you will hold dear to your heart and increase relationships. So that's 7.30 to 9 a.m. at Incredible Pizza. Also Thursday, you can listen to Buck Yeager with Austin Lane at the Red Brick Tavern beginning at 8. And MCABW will celebrate 12 years in Montgomery County at the pub on Thursday from 5 to 7. What is MCABW? Montgomery County Association of Business Women. So go there to the pub from 5 to 7. That's a lot of things to do on Thursday. 
Friday is the second annual Meet the Tigers Tiger Roar at Buddy Moorhead Stadium at 630 because it's time for some football. The Branding Iron will also host their first anniversary celebration with food trucks, wine, and many people you know from our local area. The party starts at 4, and it's right next door to us here, right next to the radio station. So go by and visit the Branding Iron. We're going to be hearing from Keith of the Branding Iron at the end of our show today, and he'll tell you more about it. It's Friday night. Also, Glenn Tate will be at the pub beginning at 9 and on the way home at the Red Brick Tavern with Jake Black, all at 9 p.m. Saturday night. Of course, you will have the Monties to go to, but after the Monties or before you go to the Monties, you could go have a meal at the Red Brick and hear Joe Hodges perform and the Lime Traders at the Current Pub. I'm sure they'll be going all night long. So the Monties, we're going to hear more about that from Craig and Stephen, and it is the most glamorous night of the year in downtown Conroe, meaning dress up, look good, put on that black tux, I'm assuming, and be ready to have some fun. And it's only $10, so they're going to tell us more about that, how you can have so much fun for $10 and see, pay tribute to our local performers. Conroe Parks and Rec will have their second annual senior prom August 12th, and it's semi-formal, and all you have to do is be 60 years old or older. That's it. So another fun thing to do. So that's all of the weekly highlights. So we're going to take a quick break and be back with Craig Campabillo and Stephen Green about the Monty's Awards this Saturday. I'm Margie Taylor, your host. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. And we are back. I'm Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News. I'm also with Taylorized PR, but we like to give you information about everything that's going on locally and especially in downtown Conroe. So I am sitting here this afternoon with two friends of mine, Stephen Green and Craig Campobella. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. So this is fun. I bet you're very excited about what's coming forward on Saturday. Yes, we are. Lots of work this week uh, still to do, but Saturday night will be the sixth annual Six. Monty Awards and Lifetime Achievement Award. It's a fantastic, glamorous night. Some people go out there to uh, mainly celebrate the hard work that all the volunteers do out in downtown Conroe to bring in people to see an area of the town they may have never seen before. You know, and I bet people don't realize that both theaters, they spend... The actors, the performers, anybody involved in the theater productions, this is all volunteers, right? And that's the purpose of the Monty Awards. That's that's where the whole concept came from. When you think of all the different shows that are on during the season, how many were there this year? 13, 14? 13. Really? And tell me how long a season is. Uh, well, it's from midsummer to the next midsummer. Okay, so it's a year, yeah. And uh, when you take that and multiply it towards all the technical people, actors, actresses, families that have to give up their loved ones for three months, well, when you talk about, uh, like I said, the technical people, the directors, the lighting people, everyone, that's thousands and thousands and thousands of man hours uh, that are spent on behalf of uh, entertainment and doing theater in downtown Conroe. You couldn't afford to buy that. We couldn't do that without the volunteers. So what we decided to do six uh, uh, six years ago was to do our very own, like, Tony Awards, to bring attention to the volunteers and their efforts. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, the main, the, one of the byproducts that we didn't have any idea, and under the, uh, under the uh, uh, capable direction of uh, Stephen Green two years ago, uh, Fitz Communications did a research study for us, and the Monty Awards uh, <clears throat> was able to provide 
one million and ninety thousand dollars worth of earned media. That's awesome for downtown Conroe. You cannot buy that. Nobody has that kind of right. Money. Well, Just that's to, good to, PR to spend on. Uh, you know. Well, you being a <laughs> PR good. person, you understand how difficult it is to get that kind of earned media. Well, it, it, that's exactly what PR is, though. It's getting people to talk about you that you don't have to pay for that advertising. So that is just, that is fabulous because it is earned. You've earned it. Right. So, um, and Susan LaFitz is, is wonderful. I have worked with her and yeah. for her yeah. <laughs> in well, the past. Like I said, she did the, res <laughs> she did the research for us. And, and my point is, is, is for the sponsors of our shows, and for downtown Conroe, and this just does not affect just the two theaters. This is all the restaurants and other businesses in town. That's how much attention the Montes has grown to give uh, to this area. So we didn't realize it was going to be that That's big. Great. And they were surprised that it was that big. But it, it is a very, very big night for theater around here. And people that are, that are new to town and haven't seen any of the theater productions, this is a time to come in and, uh, and do the uh, theater buffet because it is... All the best performers throughout the year doing songs with a live 16-piece band on stage, a big band. And uh, there's just, it's a lot of fun, and the awards are given out. There's a lot of tension in the air. And afterwards, thanks to Bernhardt Winery and Spirit of Texas Bank, we have a free after party. Bernhardt Winery provides the wine, and uh, Spirit of Texas Bank provides the 16-piece band. And it's very elegant. Everyone's in tuxes or dark uh, suits and ties, and the ladies are in evening wear. Yeah, we call it the most glamorous night of the year because it's supposed to be the night out to go and celebrate and kind of wind down from a season where you may have worked, you know, three or four shows, and that's nearly in your entire year. Uh, so people come out with their families, they come out with, you know, whoever, and they dress up really nice, they get nice pictures. It's It's just a it's less of a competition, more of a just a way to celebrate. A wind down. Right. <laughs> it's a wind down and then a startup of the new season. And right. a lot of people, like at the after party and at the show, see people that they haven't seen all year. They, don't, they, they haven't seen James Colburn do Fester in the Adams Family. But they have an opportunity to hear him perform it at the Monty's. And then at the after party, a lot of the actors and technical people and directors all get to mingle and get together and they can join forces on, nice. the, on the next season. It's worked out really, really well. I'm excited for it. I mean, I've seen many of the performances this year, too, and I saw the Adams Family, and I loved Mary Poppins, and I've seen some of them at the Owen Theater. And I know it takes a lot of time. I thought about doing that, trying out, because I, I thought it would just make me very diverse to try something like that. But I don't have the time for that. I mean, it takes – how often do they practice and have rehearsals? Well, it's relentless. Yeah, it depends on the show. Um, musicals tend to take longer because there's song practice and you know much more involved in musicals. But you know they could practice for up to three months uh, from first read through all the way up to when the show is actually opening and it's night. Close to nightly, isn't it? Yeah, Sunday. As it gets closer, Sundays, and then you have the performances. Sunday through Thursday usually, and then when it gets closer to the opening. Uh, the last week or week and a half is, is every night for long for long hours. There's just a lot of effort that is put into it. And as you know, with uh, this area growing so fast, just this past weekend or the weekend before, Mary Poppins just set a 1,500-seat or near-to-it record. Yes. Overage. Yes. On, uh, so it this, was fabulous. This is good Loved for, it. You know, this is good for everybody. And this is the opportunity. And it's 10 bucks, and you get the free wine. And you get the snacks, and you get. And the what time evening. does it start? It Greg? start. It starts at eight o'clock on Saturday. Starts at eight o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like uh, with the big spotlights, and you see com people coming in and getting ready for the show. Are you talking about searchlights? Yes. No, we. we but it we, could they, be. They, yeah, it could be. They were. <laughs> they were. Do they were donated one year, and then and they yeah. haven't been since. But, uh, uh, no, we do have spotlights inside the theater. And, yes. and everything that fun. you see. Well, the actually, theater's always there's fun. been a lot of people that have said this, that if you just look at the picture from the stage at the Monty's, uh, you can't tell if it's Dallas, Los Angeles, New York, where everybody's dressed so well and the set looks so good and you've got the big band and all that in the back. And uh, if you're just looking at a photograph, you can't really tell where yeah, it's from. It's a, it's a high-quality you know, service that we try to provide simply to – give people that chance to have fun 
and also recognize the people that work really hard. Celebrate them. Right, yes. because some of these people will work uh, hundreds and hundreds and of hours, and they some people some of the tech people work on nearly every show in that season at one theater or the other, or sometimes mm-hmm. both. Mm-hmm. And do the designs and the sound and mm-hmm. all those things you don't think about. So tell me about this award, the Monty Award. Well, I guarantee you, we've done research, and you can do the research if you want. No. This, this is the <laughs> most expensive community theater award that's given out anywhere in the United States of America. This would retail out of a gallery somewhere for $900 each. Okay, 900 bucks for each. Now, times that times 25, and that's how much. And thanks to Spirit of wow. Texas Bank, and thanks to Deep in the Heart Art Foundry, and Bases uh, by Wes Bush, and all that, they have all, we've all gotten together and figured out the cheapest way that we can do it, and to give these out. You want to give? You want to feel how heavy this is? I do. This is this is the real McCoy. Ooh, it is heavy. Yeah. How yeah. heavy is this? Well, I don't know. Five pounds? It's, it feels know. more than that. Somewhere around. It's pretty there. heavy. This is pretty cool. Yeah. So you're going to mount this then. Will it yeah. have their names on there already? Oh, yep. It's so it, the winners have already been chosen, right? Uh, how, yeah. Is that, how does that work? Well, the CPA, we have uh, seven golden ticket holders. Yeah. So essentially the way it works is we have seven people who we've selected to, and there's a bunch of people that go into choosing who those are. They go and see every single show at every theater. And they pick up a ballot uh, that has all the actors and actresses' names and, and uh, all the categories. They go see the show. They go home. They fill the ballot out, mail it directly to our CPA. Uh, and then they keep track of everything. We don't even know who the winners are until everybody else does. So it's secret. It's sealed envelope kind yeah, of thing. We don't even touch it. <laughs> it goes straight to the CPA. The CPA uh, does all the, uh, all the math. And comes out with uh, who the three nominees are. So it's and very the, exciting. And then the night of the Montes, the CPA in an armored vehicle. No, I'm just <laughs> no, 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 no. The CPA, <laughs> the CPA brings the box of envelopes uh, to the Montes. And when they open them, that's the, that's the first we know about it. So did you guys participate in any of the shows this last season? I took the trash out for the Adams family yeah, twice. Yeah, okay. I, I've actually never been in a show. Um, Why not? I, well, you know, first of all, time, but yeah. uh, I can't act, sing, dance, so that wouldn't really help anybody. This, <laughs> this, this is Stephen's gift to the, the well, theater. Okay. This is my way of participating. And Craig, I know you have per- performed, and so has your wife, Chrissy. She, mm-hmm. she has performed as well, mm-hmm. and she was in a couple of shows, Adam's wasn't family. she? Adam's Family. She was in one of the first yes, shows Yes, I remember this Adam's season. Family. She right. did that And one. she was, uh, she got, uh, acted like she was drunk. She fell on the table. And she rolled that. around on the floor and all that. <laughs> and she was pregnant the whole time and we never knew it. So, uh, wow. Bristol made it through with flying colors. Yes, so. yes. And your daughter Bristol was born July 5th? Sixth. Yeah, Sixth. I don't know. July the 5th on my oh, wife's s- birthday, yeah. Okay, see, I remembered. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you've had some sleep since then. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, so let's talk about the important things. Uh, They can get tickets still at the MontiAwards.com. Yes, there's a link there on our website where it takes them directly to the page to buy their ticket. And you have the Facebook page, which is the Monty Award, correct? Yeah, uh, the Monty Awards, yeah. If you just yes. if you search Monty Awards, you'll, find, Facebook, it. you'll find it. Right. Yes, and I will also have this information um, on Conroe Culture and Taylor Eyes PR Facebook pages if you want to see it again. Anything you want to end with here, guys? Yeah, just uh, play along with, uh, with a dress, a, t- a tuxedo, or a dark suit and a dark tie for men and women and uh, evening wear. No jeans. N- no Bermuda no shorts. shorts, any of that kind of just stuff. Just, just pay tribute just, respectively, just, right? Just, just, just play along. And uh, uh, find it's, something. It's open seating, right? It's, yes. It's open seating, so you can't reserve a seat. We have the seats on the aisles for the nominees and then in the back for the presenters. And then everybody else, if you want to be sitting by your loved one, you better get you there better early. You better get in there and get it. And get your seat because we don't, okay. res- we don't reserve seats. In the last couple of years, we've almost sold, you know, we've grown every year in terms of our audience. Um, so you got to get there, get your ticket early. Um, and if anybody wants to look at our website, it's a resource for 
all of the people who've won in the past, and it's you have all the nominees and presenters and performers there for this year. Yeah, it looks very good. Nominees. I've looked at it. Yeah, so. it's, great. it's great. And you know what? We've uh, set a, uh, another record. This is the sixth year that no one in the uh, Conroe uh, Theater community has given back a Monty Award. So <laughs> Why big, would they? That's a big record. Now, didn't you make these? I sculpted them. but Yes. Uh, I mean, that's uh, cool. You didn't even say that. Uh, <laughs> I sculpted them, and I donate, you know, right. my Your time, end of it, everything. my time, all that to it, and uh, and then the foundry does them for uh, for a more than fair price. Okay, hold it in front of you so everybody can see. Uh, yeah. Come on, there it's you not go. Not secured yet. It's okay. That's there, good. There, there it, it is. is. Right there. Monty. Award. The drama. Yes. Okay, well, fabulous, guys. I appreciate you both coming on the show, Stephen Green, Craig Campabella, and, of course, you have your studio right across the street from us. Anybody can come by and see what wonderful things you've done. Of course, they can see the live big sculptures outside uh, Spirit of Texas Banks. Right. And, and other uh, places. And other places. And thank you for having uh, Stephen and I here today. It's Absolutely. very seldom do we have the opportunity to be in such close well, proximity to uh, Dick Schisler. <laughs> Well, you're very lucky, and we'll throw you guys on here again, maybe after the show, to talk about it. Okay. Anyway, nice. have a good afternoon, and we're going to take a break. I'm Margie Taylor, Conroe Culture News. A Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for summer internship opportunities, a Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to grab the mic and be on the air. A Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world all year round. Be an on-air personality, talk show producer, or YouTube TV podcast editor. Contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776. Culture News at Lone Star Community Radio, FM 104.5, 106.1, Sudden Link, Our City TV Cable, and of course you can go to IRLoneStar.com and listen live. The podcast will be available tomorrow, and it will be uh, put on Facebook at Taylor Ice PR, Conroe Culture News, it'll put be put on LinkedIn, and it will be available on uh, IRLoneStar.com forward slash Conroe, Col- or yes, Conroe Culture News. <laughs> Got confused there for a minute. So my next guest today is Sandy Wood. She is a nurse practitioner with HCA Hospitals, Kingwood specifically, right? Yes, correct. Kingwood Medical Center. Kingwood Medical Center. And she's going to tell us a little bit about... Uh, some symptom signs of having a stroke and what you can do to somebody that is in the midst of having a stroke, right, Sandy? Absolutely, sure. Um, I want to start off by describing what a stroke is. So yes. basically, um, a stroke is an injury to the brain. So very similar to a heart attack. You know, you are having injury to your heart. So the same thing occurs to the brain. So we also use the term brain attack for a stroke. So um, with strokes, uh, there's two different types of a stroke. You have one stroke, which we call an ischemic stroke, um, where the brain does not receive oxygen. And then you have your second um, type of stroke, which is a hemorrhagic stroke. This is where there's bleeding in the brain. Um, could be due to um, an artery that's ruptured. Um, could do, be due to um, blood pressure. Um, and another condition that would cause um, a hemorrhagic stroke would be an aneurysm that's ruptured. So those are your two types of strokes. And um, I also want to talk just briefly about um, what's called a transit ischemic attack, which is also known as a TIA. Um, A lot of people describe a TIA as a mini stroke. Um, As you and I know, um, there's nothing mini about a stroke. So um, we definitely use the term uh, TIA, transit ischemic attack. Um, and basically what happens here is your brain loses oxygen uh, for, you know, a certain amount of time. And um, the good thing about a TIA is that it doesn't cause any damage to the brain. Your symptoms resolve within 24 hours and um, there's no damage to the brain. Um, so a TIA is also known as a red flag. So this is, this is your body telling you that you could potentially have 
a stroke, a, you know, an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke. So it's more of a red flag. How do you know? How do you know you're having a stroke? So basically, <laughs> um, so the signs and symptoms of a stroke is sudden onset uh, weakness, uh, sudden onset numbness, difficulty walking, um, you know, dizziness, sudden onset headaches. So there's so many different signs, you mm -hmm. know, of a stroke. And the key thing here is sudden. So if there's anything sudden. Um, out of the ordinary. At, right, out of the ordinary. So if you have, you know, you know, daily headaches, but this headache is the worst headache of your life. Yes. That is a, you know, classic sign like of a Like a stroke. pulsating, not a migraine, but no. something totally different. Totally different. Absolutely. And you feel like your blood pressure is going up. Exactly. So that's, a, you know, one of the signs of symptom of a stroke. And what you do at that point is dial 911. Okay. So you never want to ignore these symptoms. These symptoms are very critical. Um, so again, anything that's sudden, you know, make sure that you dial 911. Very good. I know someone that uh, contacted me because they were having those symptoms. Sure. And it, they said they were having a headache worse than any headache they ever had. Mm -hmm. It just came on, and their blood pressure was elevated. Right. <laughs> so scared me. Sure, absolutely. And, and it, it I is. did have the uh, hospital district come out and check the blood pressure, which was elevated. Rated. Okay. <laughs> But, absolutely. I mean, you don't not really know if you've had a stroke or what that is. Correct. Absolutely. So you never want to ignore these symptoms. You definitely want to dial 911 and not drive yourself to the hospital. I do have patients that come in and say, oh, I, you know, I was having weakness on one side of my body and, you know, my wife got me in the car and they drove me to the hospital. Well, you know, time is brain. So you definitely want to call 911. EMS knows what hospitals are, you know, That way they can centers. come out faster to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Instead of you going to them. Sure. Right? And take you to the <laughs> correct hospital because there correct. are some facilities that do not, you know, have the ability to, to treat stroke patients. Mm -hmm. And at Kingwood Medical Center, we, we are a comprehensive stroke center. And currently there's only two at a, you know, outside the Texas Medical Center. So we definitely take pride in that. Well, Conroe's one of them, aren't they? I, um, Kingwood Medical Center, Conroe is currently Conroe. working on their Conroe comprehensive right. stroke center. And so is, they, they are a primary stroke center. So they are able to, you know, treat patients as well that have strokes. And we work, it, you know, there are sister facilities. So mm -hmm. we work very closely in trying to, you know, extend um, the stroke care for our patients. So if you have a stroke, is the likelihood that you'll have another stroke? Yes, the risk is, you know, if you have one stroke, you are at higher risk for developing, you know, another stroke. And the key thing with stroke, once you've been diagnosed with a stroke, is to make sure that those risk factors are um, under control. So if you have high blood pressure, make sure that your blood pressure is, you know, uh, you know, taking care of, you're taking your medications. If you have high cholesterol, make sure that you're eating, you know, a healthy diet, low-fat diet, and taking your medications. Um also, you know, making sure that you're not smoking, you're not, you know. So smoking increases your risk. Yes, it does. Absolutely. And so does alcohol with, you know, we we tell our patients, you don't have to stop drinking, but with moderation. Everything with moderation. Absolutely. So absolutely. if you're smoking and drinking wildly. Yes, absolutely. Your risk for stroke thing. goes up. Absolutely. Yes. So. Well, that's good information. So. Anything else you need to do when somebody you think is having a stroke? If they're sitting, if you we're sitting here having a conversation and all of a sudden, what would I look for? So how would it visibly look like to me? Sure, absolutely. One of the um, acronyms that we use um, is called FAST. So face, arm, speech, and time. So um, with FAST, um, with the F, you're looking for facial droop. Um, with the A, you're looking for any type of arm weakness. Um, for S, you're looking for any type of speech difficulty, and then T is for time. Again, calling 911 immediately. And those are the most common, you know, signs and symptoms of a stroke. So if any of those are happening, you know, again, dial 911. So if we're sitting here talking and all of a sudden you start acting a little weird, right. like you're mm -hmm. not being able to form your words correctly, and you're... Is it one side of your face or just whatever? Right. Yes. You can have sudden onset confusion. Um, you can have weakness. Usually it's all on one side. So your face can droop on one side. Um, your arm, leg can, you know, start to um, show signs um, of weakness. You have difficulty walking. Okay, so. good. That's what I was wondering, too. So, well, anything sudden like that is not good, whether it's a heart attack or a stroke or right. any of that. So how can you tell the difference between a heart attack or a stroke? 
So basically what the what the heart attack, you are having chest pain, you're having pain going down your arm, you have some, you know, jaw pain, you also have numbness, um, you know, with a heart attack. And sometimes you feel like you, you have acid reflux. So those are some of the symptoms for a heart attack. Um, and with, you know, the stroke, you have more of the arm weakness, the difficulty speaking, um, you also it's, have numbness. Look, it's about your brain absolutely. And, how, and the signals to sure, your brain. Sure, absolutely. So um, those are the symptoms. Again, you never want to ignore those symptoms. You definitely want to dial 911. So. so where can somebody find out more information about one, uh, what you're telling me? Sure. One of the websites that we definitely, um, you know, send our patients to is the American Stroke Association website. They definitely have lots of information um, about, um, you know, stroke and also our website, which is, you know, Kingwood uh, Medical Center. Um, and we have lots of information regarding stroke, what to do, and also treatment as well. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Absolutely. One last thing is, you know, the important thing about these stroke symptoms is to, to get into the hospital as soon as possible, to get treated as soon as possible. Uh, currently, we only have two, um, you know, acute treatments for stroke. Uh, one of them is to receive a medication, which we use a term as a clot buster medication. Now, this medication can only be given to patients uh, within three to four and a half hours of the time of onset of symptoms. So, you only have four and a half hours to get this medication. And then the second it should treatment, be a lot of time. It should be a lot of time. <laughs> but, you know, when, say, you're at home and you have, you know, weakness and you decide to, you know, let, let me, go. right, and then you decide it's getting worse. Yeah. So your, your brain cells are dying at that point. Right. So you definitely want to call 911, go to the hospital, get the clot buster medication, try to reverse these symptoms, and um, try to prevent any, any you know, disability. Because right now, you know, stroke is the fifth leading cause of death and the number one leading cause of disability in the United States. Are men more likely than women, or is it about the same? It's actually, um, men have more strokes than women, but women die from strokes more than men do. Because they let it go. Right. Well, it, I, <laughs> right, Possibly. right, absolutely. Right. Huh. So, and then the last um, type of treatment that just came out in 2015, um, it's been approved by the American Stroke Association, and... Um, it's called a mechanical thrombectomy. It's basically where the physician can go into your groin and travel into the brain with a small catheter and hmm. go directly and pull out the clot. Interesting. And, and try to reverse the injury wow. from the stroke. So, you know, the treatment for stroke is evolving. So, um, you know, we're hoping to continue to grow in that area. So, Well... Good. I, this is great information. It, it's always good if you can help somebody else or yourself, right. you know, in an emergency situation and with the signs of what to look for, the face, the arm, the speech, the time, all that is important. And uh, we will have a podcast of this show tomorrow, and that will be part of the details that we will talk to. So anyway, Sandy, thank you very much you. for coming on the show. This is great practical information. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm Margie Taylor with Conroe Culture News, and we will be right back with our next guest. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app for your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That is Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. Taylor with Conroe Culture News at Lone Star Community Radio, FM 104.5, 106.1, or IRLoneStar.com. So we just have so much fun here today and so many things to talk about. So there's, an, there's two more events that are happening this week, and they're both on Friday, so there's no reason why you can't hit them both, because they're both important. But I am sitting here with Dawson Schnotz, uh, she's the president of the Conroe High School uh, Football Booster Club, and he's been on the show before when we talked about their golf tournament they had. Was that successful, Dawson? It was. Well, terrific. And he's, of course, in his Conroe Tiger wear and ready to do some Conroe boogie. That's right. Tiger boogie. So they have an event upcoming at Moorhead Stadium this Friday. That is correct. Tell me about it. All right. So this is our annual Meet the Tigers, and we're combining Four. for the Conroe football team. It's actually for for a lot of the uh, different uh, – the, 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 we're going to meet all the Tigers. We're going to meet the band, the cheerleaders, the drill teams, 
we have even uh, other uh, fall sports that we'll also meet out there. But but it is centered around football because it is football season coming and that's up. That's the way it rolls, yeah, that's right? That's the way it rolls. And uh, <laughs> we're excited to have all of the different programs that represent fall sports out there. But, yes, this is going to be uh, uh, on Friday night starting at 630. We're combining it this year with what we call Tiger Roar. And that's really something that the uh, high school does through Dr. Weatherly, the high school principal, and really his student council, and really more than that, the cheerleaders. What they do is, is they, they get a lot of the student body there to be able to learn the, the yells, the roars, uh, uh, all oh, the different I cheers see. and all. So we're, <laughs> so we're combining the Meet the Tigers with Tiger Roar, uh, and we're going to really try to make it like a carnival atmosphere. We're going to have a dunking booth out there where we'll have coaches and other faculty members out there to where we can dunk them. Uh, 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 we will have food trucks out there, so so there'll what be food trucks are well, they'll be. There, I'm you know? not exactly sure, okay. but there'll be different types of food food right. available, uh, and then just just kind of like a carnival atmosphere, uh, and then uh, and that all starts at 6:30. The Dunkin' booth, the food trucks, and all of that, and a lot of the d- different activities. At 7:30, the band will march into Moorhead Stadium. That's fun. And we'll have the big tiger uh, head up to where mm-hmm. the football team and the cheerleaders and all will come through that. And then we'll we'll meet the, the different uh, teams, the football team certainly, and all the different uh, football teams from varsity on down through the freshman level. Uh, and then any of the other fall sports, we'll, we'll get to meet them. We'll get to meet the cheerleaders, the uh, band, drill team, and all of that. And uh, we'll have some great auction items. All of the auction items uh, that go for the different sports that do uh, present auction items, the funds that come from those auctions will go to help support those those different uh, uh, sport sport teams and uh, and and like I said, we'll learn some some of the yells, some of the cheers that we'll do at so football you can teams. Be involved in the all football teams. All of that, and that all starts at seven thirty. And after we do the auction and, and kind of go through the cheers and meet all the teams and all, after all of that is done, which we anticipate that being done around eight forty five to, to to latest nine o'clock, then the football team is actually going to practice, uh, and the public is welcome to stay out there to watch uh, uh, some of the practice on Friday night. So uh, it's going to be just, it's the kickoff to our, our, our year of football. Time. It's going to be a fun time. I really appreciate you, Margie, for letting us come onto the radio here. And that, like we did with the uh, golf tournament, what we're really trying to do is, is restore the roar here in Conroe. We want the community to come out and support Conroe High School. The Conroe High School has a lot of great athletes, a lot of great kids. They are, they are incredible kids. Uh, the Booster Club's trying to help get, get the community here in Conroe back involved uh, with the football program here. We want it to be a great place for, for families to want to come to live here in Conroe. It's a great, great town. Uh, Conroe, in our district, it's the only school that can actually boast about that it actually has a town center and a, and a, and a, a place that we, we all can call home here in Conroe. So we're excited about that. We want to get well, them back out I think out it's here. fabulous. And I think I probably told you that my brother-in-law wrote a book about Conroe football. Right. Tiger Boogie. Absolutely. Which they sell right next door right. at the Branding Iron here. Uh, but uh, I think it's exciting. Um, my husband went to Conroe High School. I don't. I don't know what year he graduated, <laughs> but it, it was a while back. Well, <laughs> but well, it's all good. We're so appreciative of, of alumni, and, and we want to get bring the alumni back. We want to get the community here to support the, this uh, a great high school that's here. Uh, other ways you can find out about different uh, items or different things that go on uh, through the Booster Club and things that we support is obviously through our Facebook page, uh, mm-hmm. Conroe Tiger Football, uh, certainly our website, uh, which is at Conroe. Uh, tigersfootball.com and we also uh, have a Twitter uh, at CHS Football Boosters. So there's different ways that, that, that the community can find out uh, about the football program, about the things that we have going on and how different ways you can come out and support. But the main thing, we just want them to come out. Just come out. Just come out. That's, come out the, that's the main fun. thing. Bring come out, family. have fun, bring family, and let's restore the roar back here in Conroe. Can you do a roar for me? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so that's 6.30. Food trucks, entertainment, football players, cheerleaders, crowds. Go on out there. Conroe Duncan High Duke. School, Moorhead Stadium. 6.30 this Friday. All right. Thank you, Dawson. Thank I you, appreciate Margie. it. All right. We'll be right back. 
Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available in Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-3776 to take your first step into the radio world. And we are back with our last guest today on the Conroe Culture News Show in downtown Conroe. I'm your host, Margie Taylor. And uh, our guest, our last guest today is Keith Kruger with... uh, Branding Iron Custom Goods, and they are right next door to us. They're a unique store, but I'm going to let Keith tell you a little bit about it and what they have going on Friday. Welcome, Keith. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Margie. Uh, Yeah, we're right next door to Lone Star Radio, and we do lots of unique gifts and uh, unique goods. We do leather goods. We do hats, T-shirts, candles, all types of custom stuff. Uh, We try to support local makers, handmade goods. and we try to keep it as local as possible. And you have the local souvenirs. You are, I think, the only ones in town that have Conroe merchandise. Yes, we do. We have Lake Conroe t-shirts. We have Conroe, Texas. Uh, we have Conroe Tiger shirts. So we have uh, we have quite a few things. You're that, the headquarters yeah. for anything <laughs> Conroe, I think. I think so. But, yeah, so we try to, uh, we try to be proud of uh, where we're from and try to support the community and uh, you know, by having those different goods, I think it uh, helps and, you know, fosters a sense of pride for the for the town. And, of course, you have a cap on from your store, don't you, with the logo? I do. <laughs> you try to do that all the time. I see that. It's a, it's a really fun place, and it always has a great aroma in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's some of the, the handmade candles and handmade uh, waxes that we use, and uh, it keeps it smelling good for sure. So you do T-shirts, you do printing, you do logos. You're the whole full gamut of yep. everything yes. as well. Yeah, uh, total, you know, branding solutions, really. So, of course, branding. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, branding custom goods. So tell me about what's going on Friday. Uh, Friday we are cel- celebrating one year of our retail shop. So about a year ago we decided to open up more of a retail atmosphere, like I was talking about in the opening. Uh, you know, we wanted to really support downtown and have something that was special for people to come into on a daily basis and be able to shop and get something unique. And so we've been doing that for about a year, and we figured, you know, we really wanted to thank our customers for their support. And so we wanted to have a little party, a little get-together, get people out, let them know that we're still here, we're adding new products and making things different and better all the time basically to improve the experience for the customer, you know. And so we've got some vendors, we've got a food truck, we've got, we're going to have sales going on all day, different sales each hour. And so it's just going to be a good time. We've got uh, Bull Nettle, they're coming, they do different types of honey products. Um, We have Bernhardt Winery coming to give some samples of their wine. Um, We've got Nate's Food Truck, so... Um, it's going to be a bunch of different stuff, so. And that all starts at 4? 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock in downtown Conroe, right next to the Crichton Theater, and right next to the radio station. So those of you who don't think anything's going on in downtown Conroe, you've just heard from several people that that is just wrong. There's constantly something going on. And the Branding Iron, they're also, you're also doing a remodel in your store, Right. Yes, we did. We we knocked down some walls and opened up some space again, just trying to make it a better atmosphere and uh, more open, and uh, that way we can fit more products and and better stuff. So, well, and like you mentioned, you not only have the things, the uh, custom made T-shirts, Conroe, Lake Conroe. You have men's products, things like that, but you also are a full print place too. Correct. So if somebody like our calendars we do every month those get done through y'all and uh, then distributed uh throughout the downtown area and city hall that comes from you guys and uh you helped with the conroe americana music festival yes we did and uh i thought it was a big success and looking forward to next year and 
another thing, like you said, going on downtown Conroe. It's just, uh, it's like every time you turn around, there's another event, another location opening up, new restaurants we have down here. So it, there's a lot going on down there's here. There's like four businesses opening up down here. <laughs> I, I know, mean, it is, it is crazy, but it, it's a good crazy. It's yes. not a bad crazy. And I think it's awesome that you're having a party bash, mm-hmm. more of a bash. Exactly. Uh, a celebratory type of thing uh, this Friday, food trucks, wine. Nate's is also, um, she was out there at the uh, first Thursday farmer's market and the concert. So some people may already know what their food truck looks like. They do uh, great different types of different things to eat. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I know I will be there. I've, I've got a full agenda happening this week in downtown Conroe. So People need to join us and really see what it's like. Absolutely. We uh, definitely invite everyone to come out. Uh, There's going to be a lot of different people that you can meet and see what's going on. People that are, you know, out there making stuff for this community. And I think it's, you know, a great place to to come out and get to know some people and uh, get to know what's going on right here in front of you. You know, the thing I like best is local. Mm -hmm. Everything is local. You work with local vendors uh, you're a local commodity. You grew up in Conroe, correct? Yes. Did you go to Conroe High School? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you know what this guy is talking about with the Conroe Roar and all that. Absolutely. You know, um, we like local. Yeah. <laughs> and you guys are very community related. You uh, you do a lot of business with people here in this community. You're very involved in the Conroe Downtown Area Association. Uh, which is another growing aspect of things to beautify and keep things going in downtown Conroe. So I hope that some people come out and come and go starting at 4 till how late? Till at least 9 o'clock we'll be there. That's a long time. Okay. It is, but uh, we'll we'll be having a good time, so. All right, uh, and people can engage with you on all the different social media sites? Yes, uh, on Instagram it's at BrandingIronTX. On Facebook, it's Branding Iron Custom Goods. Uh, Twitter's at Branding Iron TX. So, okay. yeah, check us out. We're always posting new stuff. You uh, are. Posting sales, uh, different stuff going on. So, yeah. So, if somebody's wearing one of your hats or your shirts, you just may snap a photo of that, right? Yeah, they and actually. throw it out there. Uh, actually, people send them to me quite often. So uh, That's people, cool. Yeah, people take them all over the place and uh, send them to me, and it's it's become kind of fun. Everybody wants to wants to see when they're going to be on the Instagram page. <laughs> Shop local, yep. local businesses. Okay, we look forward to seeing you there Friday night. I appreciate uh, you coming on the show because I know you've had lots of things going on in your world yes. <laughs> today. And uh, this is Conroe Culture News. We will have a podcast of the show by tomorrow. Hope to see you all in town. This is Margie Taylor. Thank you. Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respected video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936 647 3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images.